Cedric Maxwell Podcast is brought to you by Price Picks and the Game Time app. All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I'm Josue Pavone. He is, of course, Cedric Maxwell. And we're joined by uh, Boston Globe's Gary Washburn, one third of the big NBA three podcast here on CLNS Media. How you been, Gary? What a, what a hell of a summer you you have it, man. It's almost done. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, a lot going on. Obviously, the finals, and then uh, a few weeks later, just went to Paris for the Olympics, and now just been kind of relaxing, uh, kicking back a little bit since before. You know, obviously things pick up again in late September. Uh, but yeah, everything is good. It was been an eventful summer. Um, you know, it's short. I mean, we, we almost back to this whole thing again, but, uh, yeah, it's, everything's been good. And, 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 uh, you know, uh, I haven't caught up with Max. I haven't seen Max kind of been on the low profile tip. So, uh, I'm definitely eager to hear, learn what's going on with Max. Well, I ain't been doing nothing, brother. I'm just down here in Charlotte relaxing. When I hear about you being over in Paris, how did how did me and Joe Sway get on that ticket, man? Which you know you going to Paris, you know you, it wasn't like you were covering the Celtics or nothing, but you know right. No. Just just a, that sounds like the greatest like summer for any NBA writer, you know, like you you just like oh yeah it was it was cool it was, it was all right. No, it worked out well. I was I was happy, man. So we 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 yeah. You got no friend stories? You got to give us something, man. Did you wear that, that hat? What's it? What's it? I'm, I'm, oh, hell no. I'll put myself that out there right now. <laughs> what hat? You know what the hat. Damn, the it starts beret? with a B. Damn like it. The you know what I'm yeah, the beret. That's it. Damn it. Damn, I should have looked that up before, before, we started, some, before we started the you show. Get some, you need to get some culture, dog. <laughs> Start with a B. <laughs> I knew you knew what I was talking about, but I was like, Gary's going to make me look even worse. He's talking about a beret. <laughs> well, well Gary, since- man, this Boston, this Boston public school education system, man, let it. Yeah, wow. Before, before the charter schools. Yes. Before let, the charter schools. Well, well, let well, let well, you Gary, down, Gary, man. Tell us a little bit about, you know, this, uh, we, we heard so much about the Olympics. We heard so much about, uh, you know, the uh, basketball part of it, but, the blowback with Jason Tatum seems like everybody that sees me, the first thing they're saying is, they did your boy wrong. They did your boy wrong. And, and I keep hearing that. Did you feel that over there? Did you talk to Tatum about you? Did he got done wrong? Uh, you know, I, I had a brief conversation with Jason, Jason out there, a couple of them. Um, and he was just confused. I think the whole level of confusion – uh, and there's a lot going on. I think with the roster, and I think Kerr had his favorites, and you know, and that's not a bad thing. I don't, I don't think it's bad coaching, but he obviously had a real affinity for Devin Booker. Okay, um, he really liked the the adjustments that Devin made, kind of changing his role from what he does in Phoenix, which is primarily a scorer to being a defender kind of being that 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 glue guy, Swiss army knife type of guy. And Jason just never really got into a flow with Team USA. It just he was thinking too much. He was trying to make moves. He he just didn't play in the flow. You could just tell he was not in a rhythm. And is that Kerr's fault? Was it the playing time? And I also think Jason just didn't play well. Mm-hmm. You know, his shot wasn't going down. He was afraid to shoot threes. One of his threes hit the side of the backboard, one of his corner threes. You know, he did not play well. Obviously, we've been watching Jason since he was 19 years old. And you can tell when Jason's going and you can tell when Jason's trying too hard or thinking. And I think he was thinking um, uh, a little too much, trying to trying to get in. And, and I think when you look at other guys like Anthony Edwards, Anthony Edwards, people, well, he should have played like Anthony Edwards did the best. He shot like 50 some percent from three. He shot. He was scoring. He was efficient. Devin Booker was efficient. If you look at the the shooting, Jason was not efficient. And so do you blame Kerr for not giving him extended minutes to try to get himself out of it? Or do you say, hey, Jason, you just got to play better because you're on a team filled with Hall of Famers? Yeah. And future Hall of Famers, and you, if you don't step up, you're going to be right next to Halliburton on the bench, which he was. He decided. Now I don't know what he had against Halliburton. 
you know, obviously Halliburton's first Olympics, but Jason was the second best player on Team USA in 2021 in Tokyo behind Kevin Durant. But I think once Durant came back from this injury, um, Mm -hmm. Jason, Jason's minutes suffered, obviously didn't play either game against Serbia. Uh, I don't, I didn't understand it, but I also thought Jason didn't help his case by not playing well at all either. Like right. that was a thing too. It wasn't like Jason was lighting it up. He wasn't. Well, why, why we and and you say that and it's like so many people are pissed off. I'm like Steve Kerr's job was one thing. That was to win an Olympic medal, and he that, he did that uh, with the team that he had. I don't think that you know you can look back and so sort of slapping down on him. Everybody says, well, will this affect Tatum? You know, going into next year because there's going to be a lot of people going to be going at him because you didn't play, you didn't play, but that but. What a season that young man had, you know, right. to win an uh, NBA title, to get a gold medal, to get married, to have a, have a new baby, and coming into a new season. It was, I mean, it was what dreams was made of, other than the fact he didn't play that much, but everybody can't play in those situations. I don't care who you are. And Steve Kerr, I thought, kind of did what he needed to do. And, you know, he, well, he did what he needed to do because he won an Olympic medal. Now, Tell me just how excited it was over there when uh, Steph Curry got going. Because that Man, seemed crazy. Like, I, was crazy. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before in my life. It was crazy because, um, you know, it was in Paris. So obviously, most of the fans were, the, the fans were great in the sense of like, you could tell that. They loved their home country, and, and France was getting all a lot of the – but they also love NBA basketball. They love LeBron. They love Steph. They Durant. They they are very fond of the superstars of the NBA. Mm-hmm. So whenever those guys did something, they went like they were booing. The only person they booed was Embiid because he didn't play for Team France and, and all that stuff. But everybody else was kind of like they liked them. So it turned from like – France having a chance to win and coming close and then Steph going off and the crowd was like, well, this is history. We're going to cheer for this guy. So the crowd got into it. I mean, it was a a surreal atmosphere because you're like, okay, what's going to happen here? And then Steph goes on his tie, his tangent, this boom, 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 four four and two minutes and 12 seconds and just carries them. And it was like watching, obviously, a magician at work, an artist at work, Barishnikov, however you want to put it, uh, just an artist, just putting everything. And then the, obviously that final one with two defenders and him just flipping it up there. And you're like, oh, my goodness. So the fans were going crazy. Um, they knew it was history being made. They knew that obviously the greatest shooter of the world is playing like the greatest shooter in the world. So for me, I thought it was uh, a, a tremendous it was amazing atmosphere. And even as the French fans were not booing, they were into it. They knew, I mean, I don't think they uh, envisioned their team winning the gold medal in basketball, but to see them play a good game, get into it. And then all of a sudden Steph goes nuts. That's that's, that was a surreal atmosphere. Yeah. I feel like he saved the best for last man. The, the, Gold medal game and the game leading into that, it was unreal to see him do that on that international stage for sure. But to get back to uh, what you were saying about Jason Tatum, and I don't subscribe to this theory, but I I do want to ask you, do you think there's anything about what happened in 2024, you know, being out there in France that would discourage him to do this again? And I'm not saying as if like, oh, well, don't worry about it. You know, reports saying that Steve Kerr is not going to be around. I mean, regardless, do you think he's going to be hesitant to to go back, especially when it's going to be, you know, here in the U.S. and and, in L.A.? I don't think it'll be – I don't think – I think he'll deep, think deeply about it. And I think, obviously, we're talking about four years from now. Four years from now, he could have an MVP. He could have another championship. His status will be considerably plot likely different in the NBA than it is now. Now yeah. people are questioning whether he's a top five player, and I understand all that because he didn't show it amongst his peers. Like, he didn't show, I'm the best dude on the floor – on any game that he played with team, he was just kind of blended in. And, you know, he's got to, I would say, reprove himself a little bit. He should be fired up. And do I think he got done wrong? Yeah, I think Kirk could have handled it a lot better. How? How? I think you, you got to give him a chance to, 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 to play. You can't, 
You can't be in PM. You can't be in PM. You can't be in PM, Matt. You can't be in PM. You got to give me a chance to play. You made all you made the the points already. You said. No, no, he wasn't well. good, well, but there was other guys who weren't good. Steph wasn't good until the last two games. Steph, Steph got good. a chance. I mean, Steph, you, you, here's the points you make. You say he didn't shoot it well. No. He wasn't confident. He no. didn't have any swagger about it. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to put you in the game and let you play yourself out of it. When, in fact, your job is to win the Olympics. It's no, no, I agree Olympics. with that. And but he, I think you put him in the game, Puerto Rico. You 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 try to give him an opportunity to break out of that thing, and it, it never happened. And then you know, and I and I I said Tatum could. And then defensively, I thought Tatum could have brought a lot to the table too. It wasn't just shooting the ball. I thought t- Tatum could have given them versatility. I mean, they weren't good defensively against Serbia. You don't you don't give them a shot there. Um, they were allowing nothing, but you know they allowed 15 three pointers in the first three quarters. I, I think. I mean, Serbia was shooting the lights out of the ball. The defense was terrible. You can't give him a shot there. Hey, Jason, get us a stop. Get us some rebounds. I thought he did other things well. Played defense, got some rebounds, a block shot, a steal. I mean, he did the other little things well. He just wasn't scoring the ball well. So I do understand why he didn't play as many minutes. Um, you know, but two DNPs, I thought you could have put him in there and given him, given him an opportunity to play. Well, couldn't you put Halliburton in there? Send the same you could have done that, too. I thought Halliburton was going to brought something to the table, I think, too. I think as a coach, you have to make a decision about guys who are going to play and guys who aren't going to play and how effective your game plan is. I love Jason Tate. But in this game plan, he used Durant. He made sure LeBron – and this – what does this also do? It's a two-part question here. What does this also do to LeBron James' legacy? My God, that man was like a machine. Man, yeah. I mean, it was crazy to see him at that age doing what he was able to do. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, he you just you you have to give him his props. Now, you want to say he's better than Jordan. There's a debate there. Um, you want to say he's the greatest of all time, for sure. He he could he could be that guy, but just at age 39, being the most energetic player on the floor being unstoppable, getting to the rim, just kind of having that, that dog, that, 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 yeah, just that guy, <laughs> um, you know, that was, I just thought that was pretty tremendous that he gave his all and, 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 and you're like, well, he could never play in uh, 28. Maybe he could, and he'd be 43 years old. You never know. Oh, that's crazy. You put, you put nothing past him. You can't put anything past this man at this point in his career. He has played 20 one years of just high level basketball that's never been done by Jordan by nobody in this league. You know, our friend Robert Parrish played 21 years, Kevin Willis. There's guys who's played 21 years, Vince Carter played 20 years, but not at this level, sustained level. At, at, at that level, you're talking about with Robert Parrish and Kevin Willis and guys like that, they were watchers, they weren't they weren't driving the bus. LeBron James was awesome. Driving. Us. And that's yeah, what was yeah. so crazy for me to see. His overall persona, his strength, his I mean, the way he affected I could see the players on the boat on the other teams being intimidated by LeBron James as if he was, uh, you know, 24-25. Instead of going at this dude, they shied away from him. And that was that was kind of, it was baffling to me, but I under, but I, but he, it's almost like he walked out there and he had a, a, a gold suit around him. Mm-hmm. People were being aggressive. People were, were pretty much showing homage to him. And but he played in that way, which was was fascinating to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he is obviously just one of the top two all time. If you want to put him, I, I, I'm not going to laugh anymore or say, what the hell are you talking about? If you say he's greater than Jordan. Although I think the cases are different a little bit, but how? yeah, when you said top two, I'm like you, you a Jordan guy. I'm, I'm a Jordan guy too, but yeah, I mean, how 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 are how are things different now that you look at? It? I mean, that he's playing. This is the, he, the, the, the extended career right, that he's given right. the playing until no one's played at this level at age 39. No, but not Jordan. Even though Jordan averaged 20 points a game at 40 years old for the Wizards, people like people always want to diss on the on the Jordan Wizards. Uh, that era and always because they weren't good. 
But Jordan averaged 20 points a game. and He, he had like a 55-point game, I want to say, in his last year. He did. I mean, you know, so it wasn't like Jordan. And Jordan had bad knee. His knees were, were done. Uh, he kind of he, – he, he played with the Wizards as kind of a PR move because the, the nothing, was, nothing else was working in Washington and nothing has really worked since in Washington. Um, <laughs> For real. But if you're looking at, like um, – Overall resume besides yeah. the finals, yeah. you know, and and, and 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 you know, and you can go back. Can you blame LeBron for the Lakers not being successful uh, over the last few years since the the the, the bubble championship? You could probably you could put that on some of that on him. Uh, but in terms of sustained yeah. dominance in the game and still being a top ten player, you now you want might want to say is he top five? You could probably argue that he's not right now. Top you ten, top ten, top ten, enough. totally. Yeah, yeah. And you put Jokic and you put Giannis, and you know, do you want to put Anthony Edwards in there or whatever? Do you want to put you know other guy? Are there other guys you you would say uh, Steph or whatever? You know, you can you can you can maybe push LeBron back to six or seven, but that's about it. Like that's he's still a top ten bona fide player in the league at age thirty nine. And we'll see if this will catapult him into this season with the Lakers, uh, because obviously they need to win something. Um, the, the, the clock is ticking for that. Too team. bad, huh? Too bad. Too, too bad. Sorry. So Sorry. Hey, Max don't want to see that. No, I asked Max if he wanted to see another uh, Celtics Lakers finals. He said, "No, nah, I'm good." I was like, All right, Lakers, cool. Lakers ain't gonna get there. Man. Like, yeah, so but I'm I, just saying, hypothetically, man, LeBron versus Tatum. There's a lot of stuff I, that would be fun, man. But Come just on, the man. fact that that level of dominance you've got to give lebron his props you have to give him his credit um and you know does he sell the whole thing put the king crown around his head i, I might not do all well, that but well, let's, let's talk about it this way lebron lebron james was dominant in a three-week period that he's been that good we can look at this season he was good but he wasn't that good Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app. They've got over 5 million active members. Look, it is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Now, unlike all the other apps, Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. That's it. Now, you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. And one Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. Now, here's an example of a player projection lineup. You could be going Tyreek Hill for more than 90 receiving yards or Dak Prescott for more than 263 passing yards. On the other end, Josh Allen for less than 240 passing yards and CeeDee Lamb for more than 96 receiving yards. You like those picks? So download the Price Picks app today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. That's code CLNS on Price Picks to get $50 instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks. Run your game. Well, you look at him going, oh my God, this is it. So I don't think now, you know, just where I gotta ask you. So Gary, what were some of your favorite things you did in Paris? Because this is when brothers want to know, like. What was your favorite drink? What you had to eat? You know, is that you, oh, you're, really? that, you're that different brother, you know, like you. That, Honestly, I, 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 OK, I so heard your, I heard at your wedding, you had, you know, a, you know, cookies, you know, a cookie and ice cream. Isn't that right? <laughs> Thank you, Josue. Thank you, Josue. Thank you, Josue. <laughs> That's why you something like that, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I don't think people know. I, I didn't get invited. I was there and, you know. Damn God, it, Max. Hey, I'm, That's I'm, why Gary don't invite me to anything out. anymore. I'm, I'm gonna let it out. That you know, just way all of a sudden said, "Yo, man, where were you at?" I'm like, "For oh, what?" <laughs> Gary's wedding. I'm like, "Gary's wedding." <laughs> when did Gary get married? <laughs> Just, yeah, right there, I just stopped talking, and, and, Gary. I swear, I, I just stopped I talking. Thought, He's like, you're looking at me like, here I was. You're gonna answer my question? I thought it was a destination wedding. I'm like, so where did he get married? Oh, he he got he got married right down the street from you. I'm like, what? <laughs> I see this brother later on in the I South Shore, and he going, oh, 
my bad. So, so what were your favorite things to eat over in the, you know, Paris? Where you did some of the favorite. I, mean, I ain't gonna lie, like, like fr- it, it's interesting. Like French is more French food. What I experienced because first two weeks I spent in Lille, which is a, a suburb, which is where they played the first the the uh, grant group play, you know. Uh, of the Olympics basketball, and that was a really neat city. It was it was about two hours uh, north of Paris. Um, really neat, lot lots to do. Cool suburb. Uh, downtown was popping in terms of like nice restaurants, a uh, train station. People just walked around like kind of what you would see mm-hmm. with Paris, but sort of like a smaller Paris. Um, I didn't, man. I I mean, honestly. The food, like, there's a lot of pastries. If you love chocolate, that's the Paris, the place to go. Croissant, I like cookies. Yeah, croissants, all of that. But a lot of cheese. Everything got cheese on it. But I didn't have, like, this French meal. Like, I ate a lot of, I ate a lot of Asian food, a lot of different nationalities. <laughs> um, no, at, the no, arena, no, at the arena, no, the food, at the arena, Gary the said, "Yo, Gary said, give me the give me the combo plate, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, the bone spare ribs." Did you, <laughs> did you did you did you find Popeyes over there? Or something like that? Yeah, right. They got a KFC. They got a KFC over there. Yep, show show did. Damn, Gary, you was homesick. Gary was homesick, man. They didn't because the arena food, the arena food was like terrible. Like the arena food had this. They had this like really smashed down ham and cheese sandwich. It was like, no, I'm I'm all set. Like grilled cheese, like something you oh, make, yeah. you make, and you put like the dude something you can make at the crib. Yeah, yeah so you put the <laughs> iron on it to, to get the smash. It. it was like this is you know, this is what y'all offering. And they had fr- one night I had French like fries. Like Mr. Shuttlesworth and he yeah, got yeah. game. One night you had what? French fries. <laughs> and then it was like I ain't eating this ham and cheese. French I'm gonna fries, two, right? two orders of fries. Oh. So. And then the KFC. The fries weren't even popping. The fries weren't great. Fries were all pretty good. French oh, fries okay. in France. You got it. They got to yeah, land yeah, on yeah, that, right? They got to hit that. Yeah. So uh, the t- the KFC was okay. They had like a lot of chicken tenders. It wasn't like I could order like a, a two piece or a original extra crispy. They don't have like the extra crispy and all that. They have like they had like uh, tenders and sandwiches. So it was a little different kind of KFC, but it was KFC. So. I didn't eat like I had good food. Like went to some restaurants in Paris. It was um, Thai food, Mexican. Uh, that I went to a American spot. Like I didn't eat like this authentic. It wasn't like I was eating escargot and, and all that. No, no. I mean, I. What about what about the other uh, Olympic events? Did you check anything out? I know you checked out that break dancing. No, I did not see. I did. I just not see your girl from Australia. Uh, Yo, that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. You know what kills me, Max? You know what kills me? There's brothers out now, the there. The kangaroo joint was wild. The kangaroo was brothers, not, she's trolling. Out, there's brothers out there who are like 60 years old who got used to get arrested and, and locked up for breaking or looking looking at this and be like, oh, this is what we doing now. Like this is <laughs> this is the event. Y'all, first of all, y'all took 35 years, extra years to have breaking. I couldn't, you know, like these bro- old brothers is like, I couldn't compete back then and now. Right, right. Woman, and that's what, that's our sport. That's what we like, what the hell? Yeah, she like, ruined it for everyone, man. Yeah, that, she, that'd be cool to have in LA. Now that's not happening. They're going to bring that back. No. So, so which one did you see that you liked another event that you liked? I went to track and field. That was cool. The oh, stadium. Oh, man. The atmosphere that was stadium really. stadium must have been crazy. Yeah, man. it was the track and field. I went to track and field. The rest, I just, I, I watched nothing but basketball in person. I didn't really get a chance to go to a lot of events. Um, you know, I was just watching everything like in the front, you know, the TV in France, France was like, it was terrible because everything was in French. They had no. It's supposed to be Gary. It's supposed to be. <laughs> they got one English station. Yeah, one English station, BBC. So you, if you wanted to watch the news, it was that was the spot. <laughs> that was that was in English. That was it. <laughs> and they were fascinated <laughs> with American, um, with American politics and news. So when Biden stepped down, that was a huge. Oh man, that must France. have been crazy like, for them. Yeah. And I, you know, and they had some German stations too. Uh, on the television, so I watch. You watch whatever Netflix, because and then the Olympic Channel only would show basically Team France. So if you didn't like Team France, they were not showing 
anything like, you know, the hundred meters um, between Noah Lyle. Like they weren't, they were showing if, if, if there was a French dude in it or a French athlete, they were showing it. If not, you had to, you had to try to watch it on your phone or something like that. So, I mean, it was a lot of just, it was a lot of, it was a lot of chilling in the room reading or watching Netflix um, because French TV. Well, I tell you what, I I tell you what, here in the States, and I I guess Joseph Wade might go along with me, he might not. If I don't see Snoop Dogg anymore in life, I'll be. (laughs) Damn. Oh, (laughs) man. You you tired of Snoop already? Joseph Wade, how many times have we seen him? Yes. Yeah, I read I, I read somewhere he got up to about 16 million new followers, global followers, like brand, you know what I mean? Like this is yeah. I hate to say it, Max, but this he might he might be uh he might be popping up left and right in random spots <laughs> when he within the next like year or so, man. He's he's trending right now for sure, globally trending. Yeah. I mean, I saw him. Every I did I think it was him. random, though, Max. When he first, yeah, when it first, I was like, yo, why is Snoop here? I but mean, then like every, every event, he blew up. He was at, he was at swimming. He was at Equestrian. He was at, he was, uh, you know, when fencing. I mean, I'm like, damn. I mean, is anybody else in, is anybody else there? And, uh, you know, it was just kind of crazy to see how that went. And I was like, well, now, this from my podcast, I got to get a, a feel for Because, like, seemed like he was bigger than most of the athletes who were there. For real. Yeah. Did you hear about um? Did you hear about, real quick? I just remembered right now. You hear about uh, Dr. Dre wants to wants to do uh, he wants to participate in, in archery. In the, yeah, in he the wants, next I saw that. He wants to do you saw that? Huh? He That's be gonna doing, be. He should be doing shooting. Oh, oh no! No! <laughs> no! 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 I don't know if he can top my my, my boy though. That dude that went viral, man. My man no. pulled up with his own pistol, man. That dude was my an own assassin. Pistol. Yeah, I, I thought he might be black. He had his own pistol, <laughs> no glasses, no no armor. He yeah, like, he had his hand in his pocket. <laughs> I know some brothers in the states is like, man, I can play that event. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yo, tryouts, tryouts for Team USA is yeah, gonna be wild in LA. Where the phone, where the phone, where the phone number? Where the phone number at? That I can call a uh, tryout in, in LA. Wow, I, you know what? Like, I, I did you can, like that. Bring your own. You can bring your that's own right. gun. I tell you what I did like about France though, the fact that it was the way it was, it seemed like it was culturally so so good. It was like a lot of the French culture, the buildings, the, the stadium, everything was so whereas I'm looking at this this handoff to LA and that went like it was like super I mean it was like LA LA it was on, on the beach of LA, which yeah. always seemed like wow that would seem like it's gonna be, be too much. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. They're trying to make it they're trying to make LA no transportation, no cars. That's gonna work. Um they no and way they're playing basketball at the new Clippers arena. They're playing, I think they're still using the Coliseum for something. They, yes. I feel like they have to, right? Because you have to use, you have to, you can't just have one or two venues. They're right? turning SoFi okay. into the swimming, uh, into swimming. The the football stadium is going to be where swimming is. They're moving, they're moving some stuff around, so it should be interesting to see how it goes in LA. You know, LA with no cars. Is that what you say? No car. That ain't going to work. How the hell is that going to happen? Over, in, over can I, how can I get to the swap meet over in Crenshaw? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. He needs his car for that for sure. I mean, yeah. you, oh, oh, they got the, oh, you gonna tell me they got the train going up to Crenshaw? <laughs> the swap meet. First of all, you don't for take the tourist. The train. <laughs> like, you don't take the tr- public transportation to LA is like growing up. You you was not gonna get you was not gonna get no girl talking about I'll beat you on the butt uh, on the on the bus line. <laughs> you gotta have you a car, man. Anybody from LA can attest to this growing up. Like the bus was kind of like like you the first thing you did when you got a piece of money is buy a car. You could not take and, and I know Boston's got this train line, and people do that. Oh, I'll take the green line to work and all that. <laughs> Hell no. You can, yeah, you see, that's the thing. That's why I hate. I hate when people complain about the team, man. Because I'm like, yo, so many other major cities have it way worse than, than, you than the team. Ride, you know, like so it would be interesting. But yeah, I mean, the Olympics was a great experience. I suggest anybody who can cover it or go. It's you know, I'm, I'm just disappointed 
that Boston didn't really, I know there was apparently it's going to be like a $10 billion investment. I'm just because it changes the complexion of your city. Like I think mm-hmm. there would have been a bunch of kids growing up now who would have seen that and been in that atmosphere. I was around, you know, aging myself in 84 you know, when the Olympics were in LA and I went to, <laughs> believe it or not, I went to basketball I was a third row, and I—I I mean, after you can just go up and buy tickets, I, I saw the U.S. play France with Michael, you know, MJ and Ewing and all those guys. I went to two women's basketball games uh, with Cheryl Miller and and you know Lynette Woodard, and those great players. And I went to a baseball game. I took one of the few things, uh, one, good memories. Honestly, not to be funny, with my father was me. We went to an Olympic baseball game at Dodger Stadium. Um, and that's still that was forty years ago, and I remember those days. And that's um, one of the, one of the events they they drop, right? Yeah, br- they're bringing baseball back, and but they're well, well, in they, they they are, Aren't they going to? I heard they're going to drop the break dancing then. The break dancing gone, man. And I think so they're bringing. If you, won, one. if you won the Olympic gold in break dancing, that was it. You got to yeah, 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 that's they it. Got away for Australia, uh, but they're bringing yeah. lacrosse. That girl ruined it for everybody. Cricket. Man. I think lacrosse, cricket, softball, and baseball. And I think, I think something else. But I know cricket. Hey, we'll see how that goes. I mean, I, I, I ain't seen no U.S. cricket team. Maybe there is one. Um, softball. They're playing in Oklahoma City because wow. they don't have the facilities in. So they're going to be playing all the way across the country. But wow. I would suggest anybody try to get there. And I'm, I said I'm disappointed that Boston didn't. Um, quite honestly. Make a bit because it would have changed the complexion of the city. You know, you know the yeah, the traffic would have been crazy. But to have that event in your city and all those people from all over the world, just to see the the international, the people. I mean, you know, Max, it was it was just to see like honestly the journalists from Africa and know the cover and they're wearing their color, the colors of their country, and it's like moving to see. Were you wearing the colors of your country? I was not wearing the colors of our country. <laughs> no. Like I know, yeah, they, 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 they know. Come on, Max. They know. Debate. Like that's an American was, right there. I was talking to our friend. I was talking to our, and the one person I. You did not represent one. You said you went over there. You didn't eat any French food. No. Then you get over there and you say, "Well, I was." Watching. I didn't wear no USA jacket. I like a lot of the journalists from the other countries wear was, stuff representing their country. Everything was different. Nah, like we just. Yeah. I'm like Max, we just don't do that. We don't U.S. U.S. food. Like we don't be. We don't be we don't be claiming <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because that. like, everybody knows, man. Everybody knows. And then, honestly, and I know, I know both of y'all can feel I me on that. When you're in another answer, country, people just know you from America. Right? Break out, look at you. Answer, you do. But you would see the break out with a grill, man. Break out with a damn grill. And with then, the grill, you know, no, that come on, I can't do it. <laughs> that, well, that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> you but I, I was like, the thing was, it was when you see all the anthems. And you see all the other athletes, the hoopers, and they singing their anthem, oh, and it's all awesome. And then the United States uh, starts playing better. All the U.S. players are like, because uh, 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 uh. like, you know, we so used to them hearing the thing. We we don't like we need to revamp maybe the anthem a little bit because our other anthems like I was bobbing my head like the the Serbian anthem <laughs> yeah, the Serbian anthem kind of bumping and the French anthem and just see them come around and sing and we just don't have that type of like patriotism so but you would see other countries wearing uh, their country like Finland and you know like yeah like they they rapping. We right. don't really do that in the states, but well, let's, let's let's tie this in. It's because we got we got too used yeah, to it, man. Yeah, yeah I just since you know, we were kids, we, you got to stand up and look at the flag. Maybe we get that going. Right. Well, well, let's tie this or maybe thing. if we had had Marvin Gaye sing every anthem, uh, we, we would have been. That would have been the official anthem. That would have been effects, but if you want to make a memory, you got to go to Game Time. All right, Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you all the incredible deals and the great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of seats. You've got the super deal. Don't forget about the super deal. And curated deals, they make it easier to find the best price on great seats. And I think this is so cool, is when you, you click on the ticket, right? You go, to, you go to the app, 
if you want to go to a game in Boston, you want to go to a game in New York or Philadelphia, whatever, you go to the city and you click on the game you want to go to, and then they just show you a great, uh, easy to read layout of the stadium. And then you cl- click on the seat you want, and then you get a view of the seat right from there. Boom. You, you, you know what you're buying. So you get seat views before you buy, and they have the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation, protection, job loss. It, it's terrific. So toggling, toggling here with the Game Time app. Now, this feature shows the total upfront, no surprise fees at checkout. So you know what you're dealing with. You don't click on the button after and you go, wait a minute, what's that extra 20 bucks for? Uh, also, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference for the lowest price guarantee. They have the lowest price guarantee or Game Time will credit you up to 100% of the difference. And your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Let, let me, let me, we're going to tie something in here that we did. We had the ice, ice cube on. Yeah, we did. We talked about, that? we talked about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I said, you know, when he, I saw him in Boston <clears> and so I walked up to him and he looked at me and he went fucking cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> but we, but we talked to him about the, the, the big three. And then we talked about, about Olympic three on three basketball. Did you get a chance to see any of the three on three? And we talked to Ice Cube because Ice Cube wanted to ch- his team, he wanted his championship team to challenge the Olympic championship team. And yeah, the uh, Netherlands. He was kind of kicked to the waist that they wouldn't do it, but he was a yeah. We guy. first of all, like Max, like that. I don't know if y'all did, have y'all watched the three on three. That's nonstop. Like that is yeah. no like that is like you got to be in mad shape and people think. Yeah. That you just, it's three big husky brothers like at the park, like it used to be posted up. No, 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 no. Like you don't stop. <laughs> the games are 15 minutes like that, like that. We got to really, and I, 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 it's embarrassing for the US to be terrible. And we lost one of them games. We lost to the, the gold medal team 21 to six. Like, but, oh, the final but score. Did, but yeah. let me ask you this. Never the, 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 the gold medal. Our best players over. No, well, who are you gonna sit? One, you got like this is what I learned about it. You have to be in their circuit, like you got to tour all over the world. So you could get maybe retired players who are like, or let's say a guy from the G League or something who's like, you know what, I want to give up a season in the G League before the Olympics, and I want to go because they play in the Netherlands, they play in Mongolia, they play in like three on three hoop outside of the United States is big. Wow. Like it's kind of crazy. Like it. Like I don't know what we were doing, but we just was chilling, and all, all these other countries was catching up and playing three on three ball. So like we're losing to like Spain and like you know we're losing. We're losing it's like China. a recreational thing out yeah. here. That's I'm true. Yeah, to the Netherlands. Right. The Netherlands yeah. won the gold. Like how, like well, like well, we now he wants get, to like he, next, he, we, just when we can't get three brothers from Boston, <laughs> like, we can't. That's, that's, like I was, I couldn't believe it. There needs to like, be we were, like a national tournament, and then they just form the the, the best three out of that tournament or like something a like national, that. Yeah. International tour, so you can't. The what the United States can't do is get three NBA dudes in twenty twenty seven. Like, okay, we gonna get Anthony Edwards. We gonna get right. Cooper, or not people are not in the Olympic team. Like, we gonna get three like good NBA players and just uh, put them on three on three because they haven't toured. They don't have the points. So that's the thing. It would take like these players to have to literally give up a season and go on this tour to earn the points to be able to qualify to play. So the guys who they were over there, they qualified to they, play? Like Jimmer Fredette, yes. They, they, were in the, they were in the circuit. Oh, so that, that's the thing. Um, so the Netherlands, like I'm sure Ice Cube said, did accept, but FIBA stepped in and said it was y'all to give us enough advance notice or whatever. Right. But even, 
So in re- so in response to that, he wants to do an international tournament in like January with the the big three all stars going up against you know whether it's the Netherlands. Pick he's, he said about four or five countries, and he's hoping that the uh, that FIBA will agree to that uh, you know, so, somewhere you, around January. It was good. It was fun to see the big. I went to the game, the big three game championship game, and you know it's a skill. It's a skill, and you still got yeah. guys with extends careers. I like it. I liked it. It was good Gerald to see. Green went off, Gerald, man. Gerald yeah, Green. Man. You know, Gerald Green was a part of the championship team. Um, and I like Gerald. I think Gerald, Gerald it was a little, I mean, first of all, like Anthony Edwards saying dudes weren't athletes. Like Gerald Green, like, was probably the top one. Of the, I don't know, top five, Max, but top 10 athletes I've ever seen yeah. in terms of his athleticism. Like, my goodness. And he, you know, he's 38 now. Believe it or not, he's been it's been 20 years since he came out of uh, high wow. school. But Straight from high school, yeah. It was great to see Gerald win something. And I know he's had a hard luck career and probably came out of you know won a dunk contest, but you know, he still wants to play in the league and he hit six threes. He learned how to shoot. If he had learned yeah. how to shoot 10 years ago, like he did now, whoo boy. I mean, it was good to see those guys, a lot of the guys, Corey Brewer, now a former Florida star teammate, former college teammate Al Horford. Winning championship, Gary Payton is the coach. So, yeah, I think I think the big three could work international. I think Ice Cube has got a great idea, and I know he's like kind of the guy. Who, you know, the NBA doesn't want to. Mm. Let Let's be honest. Like, why don't they show these games on ESPN or some of these things? Yeah. Like, I've seen enough cornhole. I've seen enough. <laughs> um, no, last time we had you on, you you was watching some some dude on there. That's right. They had, whole they, had bro- they had a brother doing cornhole. I'm like, <laughs> that's right. You know, what, what, what's, what's right now? And then <laughs> and, and Max, y'all y'all, y'all seen the right slapping game? Y'all that's seen right. when they slap each other? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like, right. That's on like, TV now. Yeah, that's on TV. Oh, like they did, that, they did that in the hood for free. Exactly <laughs> for real. <laughs> like I thought some brother was like, wait a minute, man. I got arrested nah. for him. And now nah, I nah. But the other, the, the, your I opponent slapped, didn't just I let slapped, you do that, I though. Slapped yeah. Curtis, I slapped Curtis after he took my girl. <laughs> and now I got arrested for that. And now I can go pro. I can go pro. You could have you you won some scratch with that, man. You could have competed. I, what's going on here? Like, we're legitimizing stuff that brothers used to get arrested for. Yeah. Like, I, I was little, our I was new little. president, whoever it is, hopefully, yeah. we'll see who our, make, needs to make some adjustments you know to these what? things. Because you know there's I, some I, brothers in jail for slapping some, slapping another guy, and he could go oh, pro doing that. Wow. I, I was surprised, though, when we did have Ice Cube <laughs> on, and he went in. We talked to a little bit about a bunch of oh, different man. things. And one of them, other than that, is you know because he was the um the commentator he was the what was what was he Joe Sway the narrator one of the narrators for oh yeah for the 30 uh um, 30 for 30 30 and, for 30 yeah that had, you that had, yeah that was starring starring oh, yeah. next he he said he hated he said he hated he said I and he said well I don't hate anybody that's what he started off with I said well how you feel, I said how you feel about right? Mel Carr and he went oh man Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> he, he, he went into a whole nother circle when he said Mel Carr's name. It was just absolutely crazy. I was like, yeah, Mel Carr." He said, "Man," he said, "I, I couldn't just, stand that brother." We, I, it, Max, I told you, I told you, there's probably still a hit on Mel Carr in LA. What's ML's? What sixty eight now? Yo, ML, Gary, ML walked the Gary, show. he told, I, told, I would tell you the security. I say, yo, ML, he told. Don't go back to L.A. without no security. You can get some security. Yeah, I don't Max care. told you the story about Fat Burger. Don't, like, don't have him do this. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh-uh. You need, you know, Max... Max told Cube about the story when he uh, he went to the the when Emma Carr went to Fat Burger and they were like, we ain't serving you, man. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like... Of course, man. What'd you think? You think you think LA's gonna forgive you? It was like the day after they won the championship, I think, right, Max? Something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, it, 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 no, it was it was that summer. I tried to tell was, you that it was summer of oh it was that summer. It was that summer, summer of okay. Olympics that uh, that anybody who was with the Celtics <laughs> came back to LA during that summer and we just we we just got beat up. Oh man, that's hilarious. 
All right, lastly, man, before we get you out of here, Gary, the uh, the Jalen Brown versus Nike slash Team USA, what's your, what's your take on this whole thing, man? I mean, like, is it a snub? Is, is Jalen, you know, like, got something here? And oh, Hold up, Joseph. Hold up, Joseph. Wade. Hold up, Joseph. Wade. Hold up, Joseph. Wade. What up? Jalen got a rap song out, and you ain't said a word. Like, what? Yo. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna bring it up, but, but I, I know you didn't. I you didn't hear it yet. Guy, like, what you think? Because, like, I was like, I, I, I got, know, I got a take. I got a take. But what do you think? What do you think about it? What I think about the rap song? I think he. I think it was. It was he? I think it was a rap song. <laughs> if he wasn't Jalen Brown, people would be like, "Oh, this, this is pretty. This ain't bad. This ain't bad." But because it's Jalen. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's just that's just the way it is for NBA players, man. I'm sorry, Dame Lillard, you know, Allen Iverson back in the day, even the late great Kobe Bryant. Like, yeah, you could come with some of the hardest like lyrics, but it's like, yo, man, you're a basketball player, man. Like, it just doesn't resonate the same. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can't yeah. think of another like. I heard Shaq back in the day. I gotta hear it, but I heard Shaq was kind of like one of the better ones that you could sort of say, okay, you, this, you know, this, this fits. The Shaq song with Biggie. Have you ever heard? Oh, that's that? a great song. That one I heard. You yeah, because you told me to actually. It was you. Yeah, you told me. Yeah, it was on. I looked it up. And now Biggie, it's on streaming. But it was yeah. it, Biggie killed it. Like Biggie's verses. Right. Apparently, Shaq said Biggie literally was like came into the studio, said give me a joint, and then twenty minutes later he was like, okay, my verses are done. Like yeah. when y'all ready to lay the shot. Like he came in and was like, <laughs> like Shaq was all prepared, and Biggie came in, did do that, and then literally twenty minutes later he like, that okay, thing. Yeah, I've written my verses. Let's do this. Y'all ready? Because I got a <laughs> place else to be. And then right. just killed it. Um, I, th- I mean, I was a little disturbed by Jalen smoking a cigar. Like, I didn't think he was that, you know, like, like, uh, uh. What do you think about the Swisher line? You know what a Swisher is? No, what's a Swisher? What, no, I'm sorry. It's a cigar that's known for for rolling something else up. So I was oh, surprised he yeah. dropped that line as well. Yeah, yeah. but I don't, I don't know if that's like a... If that's what he was doing in the video, but swishes are, are definitely they're not used for just the cigars. Put it that way. <laughs> so I was a little surprised by it, Max. I gotta I gotta play it for you, man. But again, like, if you don't know it's Jalen Brown, you're like this guy's not that bad. No, I saw. But then it. you I know it's Jalen, you're like I saw actually. So oh, you saw the video? video? Yeah, my daughter turned me on to the video, and I was like, when he put the gold thing on, he started shaking, and then he went into this whole rap. I like, okay. and then. This and we talked thing. about this on the podcast. Who is who is ASAP Ferg? Like, what does that mean, man? Oh, okay, so ASAP Ferg. Uh, this is like, man, it was like a decade ago. Uh, the ASAP Crew came out, and they all sort of just went like they all have their solo careers after the fact. But it was ASAP Rocky. It was ASAP Ferg. ASAP. There's like three or four of them, and they all start their name with that, and then like they branched off into their own solo careers. And I say ASAP Rocky, ASAP Ferg are probably the ones that are still. Uh, Still going, still relevant, but yeah, well, he's been a fan. ASAP Rocky is he's married to is it Rihanna? Is that who he's married to? Who's yeah, married to yeah, Rihanna? they have a yeah, 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 they got they have two kids together, I believe, but yeah, they're married. Yeah, well, okay. he's married to he, yeah. he's married to a billionaire. Okay, he, he's ASAP, whatever he can be sap one. And because sap, of that, Max, he, he dropped an album like every like six years, man. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 due. But ASAP Ferg, I'd say, has, has had a couple more uh albums in the last few years. But yeah, I mean, he see when you see when you hear uh, Ferg take over, you're like, okay, this is a rapper, rapper. You know what I mean? But like again, like I just feel like the flow and everything it isn't bad, but because it's Jalen, it's like like NBA I would players my, can't maybe, get outside of I that keep element. My regular job, you know, I'm right, keep my right. regular job. But the fact that NBA Finals MVP dropped a, a, a rap track, well, everybody can rap though. Funny. Nobody yeah, like true. not everybody can rap, and it's just thank like, you. Like, first yeah, of all, is not the only thing he knows, guys. I'm gonna you know show I mean? my age. That's like, insane. this new generation kid, y'all talk. I'm here, uh-huh. and they put a beat on it. Like, y'all, like, you put some of these old, you put Rakim up there, Rakim, tear these dudes up. Big Daddy Kane, but tear these dudes apart. Like, just flow and rhythm. Yeah, like, I kind of blame 50 for that, man. 50 kind of started that whole, no, like, like I'm not singing, but I'm kind of just like doing the Jay-Z, hook. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Bitches, bitches. Like, Jay Z was a, He's the the Michael Jordan of talking rappers. Like, dude, you ain't rapping, you talking. Like, I can hear that. One of, one of my homeboys would do that. Like, where's the rhythm, the flow? Like, <laughs> I, I don't, I, that's Yo. me. I'm from my age or whatever. Like, nah, I know man. 
like back then, I feel like they were told if if you don't change your style, if you keep rapping like this, we, we're not gonna get on the radio. So I feel nope. like maybe that was part of it as well. But <laughs> but you're right though. People don't rap the way they used to. The speed is is completely slowed down. <laughs> yeah, man. I thought Jalen. I feel like Jalen just wanted to get that to get some stuff off his chest, man. I feel like there's some subliminals in there as well. Uh, I don't know, but his you know the the girl that he's with and you know Nike shots at Nike and all that stuff. But along those lines, like, what, what do you what's your what's your take on that whole thing? Because I don't. I mean, look, it's hard to say from the outside looking in. Look, we we ain't gonna talk no more about that. My my house clean cleans are here. About to go in my room. They asking me. So we are gonna get Gary off right now. Oh man, but I was gonna say I was gonna, I was gonna ask him about the the, the Jalen and Nike thing real quick. No, the Nike we Team USA. Even, well, we'll talk, we'll, I'll be up with y'all next week. We talk about Lonnie Walker, great signing. Yeah, yeah that's um, right. Fifteenth yeah, man, he's, right he's there. there you go. I mean, I'm stunned that they. You know, I've written the last week or so that he's still out there, and I'm like, he's only 25. Why is he still not on the minimum deal? And our, you know, that might be the end of the line for our friend O'Shea Brissett, who mm, opted out yeah, of the right. championship team. And thought he was going to get paid somewhere else, and now he might have to get a training camp invite. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think Lonnie Walker is exactly what the Celtics need. You need, like I've always said, like a Jamal Crawford type of dude who can come off the bench and get you some points, get your buckets. When Jason and Jalen give them a break, you need some scoring. This dude can put it down. So if you look at his numbers and per minute, I think that's a great sign. So, uh, you know. So next next week, folks, we're gonna get into that. I want to thank you again for coming in. It was uh, great. Although your French fries, that was some bullshit. <laughs> you, <laughs> you wanted to hear some we, gourmet we meals. Thank you for coming in with us, and uh, we're gonna peace out right now. Peace. All right, see y'all. Josue Pavone here, CLNS Media, and if you made it this far, that means you really like this video. So hit subscribe, make sure you keep our notifications on, damn it, and we got plenty of uh, great content coming your way.